Oh, wow. That was real useful. We built the whole mezzanine for no reason. Real useful out there. Not a mistake. I'll end up finishing it and we'll use it for something. Most likely some sort of office space. In the future, possibly in the near future, I'm going to be looking for a bigger space to expand into because right now the space does not allow me to do what I want. Yeah, I can make, I can still machine plugs, but I really need to bring in some commercial grade CNC machines for machining metal. And that's what I really want. That's where the money's at. Um, so sooner or later, I'm going to, I think I'm going to keep this place and then also find another place where I can really run the business that I want to run. Um, however, for now, we're gonna be in here. Inspire Automotive Manufacturing Garage. And today, we're going to be putting together or assembling a full scale, full size plug of a car called Arma GT. I've machined all the parts out and I just have to glue and screw them together. Thought that would make an interesting video for you guys to see. A few other updates about what's happening. Mm, that machine back there, zoom in on, on that baby girl over there. That's uh, employee number one, works for free. Employee number one is going to get an upgrade, which is going to be a major game changer here. Basically, I'm changing this machine to a five axis machine. I've been using this machine for a good five years and it served me well, but it's not good enough for the big boys. You know what I mean? It's not good enough for the big boys. Guys in their garages, little companies, they, they want to make their own car body. That's what this is good for. But when precision and true tool making is required, then the five axis is a must. No three axis. No, no bueno, no bueno three tre axis. No bueno tre axis. Okay? And not to downgrade anything. You can still make accurate plugs, and I have, but the five axis is just necessary for this type of work. We're gonna have about 24 inches of Z-axis clearance that we can use our fourth and fifth axis head to machine plugs with. However, I'm not just going to be machining the plugs out of styrofoam. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to machine a rough plug out of styrofoam, and then I'm going to build up coats of putty, maybe about a quarter inch of thickness on the surface. And then I'll remachine it. I'll do a final remachining on the plug. That way, we don't have to go through the hard coating process manually. And that's gonna save us a ton of work that I was not ever wanting to do ever again. Okay, so now that we have all of that out of the way, let's get to twerking.
going to be using some 12-inch uh, screws and some epoxy to glue everything together. But what you're looking at here is towards the front end, and that will be the rear end back there. So this is what it looks like so far. We're going to continue putting pieces together, and I hope you guys like what you see. Let's keep it moving. I've designed these walls on the inside of the club and they sort of help support and they also they help with aligning the parts together. So a little bit like a styrofoam frame and over the top of this we can put on our rear deck and then our two sides and then our rear bumper. Permanent and All right, so that's the rear section minus a piece that I haven't machined out yet. I forgot about that piece. So here we are, we have the full scale plug assembled and this is what it looks like. The guys at Arma GT, they'll finish up the surface, hard coat it and make molds from it. Very nice car. This looks very nice, I think they did a good job designing this it's about simple practical surfaces but very elegant and I like that it's not trying too hard and then like the best part of this car I think a lot of people will agree is how this they call this a plate or a slab I'm not an automotive designer but how this transition to the rear fender and it has this little curve and it's, it's the best part of the car in my opinion. You know, it, it, never, it never gets old putting plugs together and seeing how it looks as a real model. And this design is a winner as far as kit cars go. Um, there's a lot of terribly designed kit cars in terms of the body. And you could tell the person who designed it really have no experience in designing the car. They probably just drew something up on the napkin and say, hey, we're gonna, let's make this happen. And then it doesn't really translate to reality well. There's a, a tubular chassis designed for it. Um, so this car is in the works as a kit car that you can 
purchase a kit and build. So if you see this car, if you see this body, you know where it came from. Don't pretend that you don't know where it came from. Let them know who did it. Let's give you guys this aerial shot of the car. Ooh oh, snap. We got one of these in the garage. Where can I find one? Where can I, where can I get one of those? That's it for this one, and I hope you guys liked it. Um, I'll keep you guys updated more often these days. Right after this one, I'm going to show you guys the next project, which is our B and C axis, fourth and fifth axis add-on to our CNC machine. That's going to be excellent, if you ask me. See you guys later. Bye.